Hey guys, this is Allie Greenstone from Mary's Medicinals. I'm here with Chad Drew. This is Pot Talk on World Viral TV. All right, Music Buzz Live. We're here in Studio A. It is time for Pot Talk. Chad Drew, what's going on? Pot Talk. I always love this time of the week when we get a chance to be honored with an awesome guest. Yeah. So today we are very fortunate to have Michael Elliott from the Marijuana Industry Group have joining us, man. Uh, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. For sure. I First off, I just want to say I feel underdressed I'm, now. I feel totally <laughs> underdressed, man. Uh, Chris is back there in the booth all, all you know, spiffed out. Michael's looking great. <laughs> we look like butt tenders. Yeah. You know? no, just, <laughs> uh, very uh, sorry cool. about that, guys. Didn't mean hey, to uh, make you feel... We Unwelcome get, in your own home. We get shown up fashion-wise all the time, honestly. <laughs> yeah, so it's I'm all good. It. So tell us a little bit about Marijuana Industry Group. I know you guys just started out in 2011. Um, you guys play a huge part in a lot of the cannabis uh, forming of the nation now that since you're representing Denver. So get into it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. So uh, we actually we started in 2010, uh, but we are a trade association of licensed marijuana businesses that operates here in, in, in Colorado. Our office is in downtown Denver. And uh, really, we have formed to primarily try to pass good policy uh, at the state capitol here in Colorado, at the city of Denver, and with the rulemaking authority, which is the Marijuana Enforcement Division. Okay. And if... if uh you said you're a, a trade group. If somebody is in the business and they want to become a part of this, is that something they can do? Yeah, really. Our, our membership is focused on Colorado licensed marijuana business owners. Okay. And uh, they're, of course, welcome to reach out to me uh, about the group. And we meet pretty much every Tuesday evening downtown and talk about marijuana policy. And we've been meeting every Tuesday evening for, uh, yeah, it's going on about six years now. Right. Wow. And uh, we never run out of things to talk about never ever I'm sure I, yeah. I talk often about how I've been in the industry for six years and every day is different every week is is a mile that you've ran you know, I've had a couple people tell me recently that things are more difficult now than they feel like it's ever been and there's so many challenges coming down I mean you see what's happening at the state level the city level and I know we're gonna get into some of this with uh, uh, possibly a statewide ballot initiative to ban all marijuana above 15% right. THC potency really uh, what's your take this on huge. this I would love to I would love to yeah. know on your level where you're at where you guys are standing yeah right well um, uh, it's very problematic it, it, it from from our perspective this is an effort by the people who would really like to repeal amendment 64 right and they're seeing that they can't do that uh, it's more popular now than when it passed uh, back in 2012 and this is a really interesting way to gut <clears throat> amendment 64 without actually overturning it right. and uh, if you look at it if it bans everything above 16 percent THC that is most of the plants that are grown in marijuana businesses now and it's probably all the concentrates and many of the edibles and many of the other products as well so this right. is a way of preventing uh, you know, really, most of the stuff that you see in businesses uh, having to be moved out, you can't sell that anymore, and uh, you've got to so sell those low, uh, low THC plants. Right. I mean, our our average customer comes in expecting twenty at least. Like, if you show them anything under under twenty percent, they're like, ah, what else you got? If even if that were to pass. Wouldn't that face an immediate stream of lawsuits from pretty much every in company in the business? Well, the thing is, is that. Well, okay, so let's start here. Right now, at the state capitol, we've got about 20 marijuana bills that are being debated right now. And uh, wow. May 11th is the last day of the legislative session. All those bills are going to live or die within the next about month. Uh, but one of the bills is going uh, to renew the entire recreational uh, the state laws on recreational marijuana that the state legislature has put into place. And with that bill that needs to pass, uh, the smart Colorado folks, the anti-marijuana folks, are trying to amend that to uh. ban this marijuana that's above 15% THC. They're probably going to fail at that, but yeah. right. uh, their backup plan is to go to the voters and amend the Constitution. And it literally to change Amendment 64. So their plan right now is to is to get some ballot language approved, which they're, they're in the process of doing right now, and then collect some signatures. They'd have to get about 100,000 ballot signatures and put this puppy on the ballot for November 2016. And what are you guys doing to go against that, or, or what can be done in, anyway? Yeah, well, this is just the... the, the, the 
this all came about in the last couple weeks, and okay. yes. this went from being uh, a bunch of people talking and us hearing about it and wondering, like, why are they talking so much about this? What is their plan? And you know, they've kind of gone from this legislative strategy, from amending a bill to literally earlier today, I was at the Capitol at a hearing where they're talking, uh, they actually had a meeting about their ballot language. So they've got ballot language now that they need to get approved, and, uh, and, and then they'll be able to you know, actually have petitions and go collect the signatures. And at this point, uh, we're getting mobilized. It's been, we're at this point where this went from being something that uh, nobody was sure if it was serious or not to mm -hmm. this is very serious. It's very serious. Right. And so uh, at, at the moment, we're, we're kind of getting started with the response. It's so. kind of baffling to me because it's, I, I'm so immersed on my end of the cannabis industry that it's almost hard for me to fathom that there, is, especially in Denver, where this has turned into a norm, it's turned into our culture, it's turned, it's interlaced itself within our society, within the, within the state dramatically. But to have people against it, is there really 100,000 people that are going to be kind of signing against it in in the city anymore like i thought everybody liked it and was down on it <laughs> you know they got to get a hundred thousand signatures across the state and yeah i i think that they can probably do that uh when you look at sort of uh uh well you know you look at the polls right now we have a poll saying that legalization has over 60 percent support that, that means 40 percent is still against it and right. uh, uh colorado's got i think we got about six million people in the state or so there's there's a lot of people there for them to go to that are anti-marijuana and if they've got enough money they'll be able to get the signatures right. but yep. uh, it's just it's just so baffling to me and we're so thankful to have the warriors at the front line like you guys are making sure that that, that this right, this right that we've all fought for for decades, is is available, um, especially on the medical side of things. So, well, thank you. This uh, uh, this whole this whole new battle, this is a brand new one, and uh, it hasn't been talked about a lot. I think people uh, haven't realized quite how serious this is, and uh, you know our, ourselves too. Today was kind of an eye opener of this is happening right and uh there's a whole lot of ways that it can get derailed and they can screw it up and it cannot be on the ballot this november mm -hmm. i mean really they're, they're they're gonna have to probably raise a few million dollars to run a campaign but right. if they do that right that means we're gonna have to do that we're gonna yeah, have to run a campaign absolutely. too i mean and i and i see within the industry that the uh the, you know the the limitations that are set to take place in october where it's only two grams of concentrate or you know uh, 20 doses on an edible on the recreational mm -hmm. side that was that's a little bit hard enough for the industry folks and the folks that are are the patients that are literally coming in to get their medicine to wrap their heads around but then to also have less than 16 percent on any of this stuff that's just a whole nother level yeah, it's kind of ironic that the people who are complaining about potency are people who don't actually use it right uh, we're yeah. hearing it from the, the the people who really want to repeal amendment 64 right and uh uh, a lot of these issues, you know, public education, good labeling, uh, you know, th these are things that we've been working hard on these last few years to give consumers everything that they need to know, and we're going to keep doing that. Uh, if, if if there's problems, we're we're going to come up with regulatory solutions and not a ban. Right. Right. Yeah. I I, I mean I got I got to hand it to you. I I just think that yeah. I mean with with everything that's going on, obviously there's talk about you know Obama, you know declassifying or reclassifying um, cannabis um, be on his way out. You know, I know there's talks that it could take up until halfway through the next president's second term. I think that's what we were quoted at one point. I mean, to be able to fight these fights for us, we're, we're very thankful to have advocates that can, I mean, th it, this is crazy to me because it's not like they, they limit the amount of nicotine in a cigarette. It's not like they limit the amount of alcohol in a drink so much, I mean, there's certain stipulations to it, but I mean, to be able to, to limit the potency in cannabis just doesn't seem right in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah. Those are interesting analogies, but let's talk about abortion as an analogy for a minute, where uh, uh, Roe v. Wade passed back in the 70s, and what we see now is uh, state laws that keep whittling the right back, back, back to where, okay, you can get an abortion, but we just don't have any clinics available for you to go to, <laughs> yeah. right. or you've got to wait 48 hours, or you've got to sign all these forms, or yada, 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 to where uh, it becomes impossible. You've got the right to do it, become, but it becomes impossible to actually uh, uh, do it. Right. Yeah. You've that, got the right to do 
Nothing, basically. Ho- hopefully, this isn't the first step in something like that happening with, with this industry. Uh, no, I, th- I think it is, but, actually. Well, <laughs> but yeah, but uh, well, I understand that, but hopefully it doesn't get farther than that yeah. with, with yeah. this. I, I, de- I've, I've, I talk often about how we have a blueprint for how it's done right, and I think that yeah. the fighting that you guys have done for proper labeling to, you know, for education and whatnot needs to be followed in a lot of different states. Do you... Yeah, I mean, I know that we have we're we're up to like 24 states now, I believe that are that are on our on the fight, you know, officially, 23, 24, something. Like that. It's tough to keep track of the numbers anymore. I think it's 23 medical marijuana states, but then you got to throw in like another 15 states that are CBD only. Right. Uh, uh-huh. Utah, you know, next door neighbor. Uh, wow, who saw that becoming? They, they got CBD bill yeah. they almost passed a medical marijuana they bill it got through the state senate and died in the house uh but these cbd only pieces which a lot of people don't like because you know quite frankly they're not very good right but and also it's a state like utah that is literally defying the federal government one way or the other so when you count those states where we're getting closer to 40 states that are are really saying you know what federal government this is a, your policy doesn't make any sense and yeah. we're going our own way and i just saw a denver post article today about now the fed uh, considering at least de- reclassifying it, yeah. Um, yeah, the DEA, the DEA, yeah. the DEA. Yes. They said they're three, like three weeks away. They said that something in like July. They're planning yeah. on ha- trying to have it done by July. Yeah, and uh, you know the DEA has looked at marijuana many times over the last several decades. I know that many different companies or, or organizations rather have petitioned the DEA to re- uh, reschedule marijuana, mm-hmm. and. You know, the DEA's response has been to ignore it, ignore it. Like some of these uh, petitions have gone on for like 10 years before they get a response from the DEA, which has always been, no, marijuana is one of the most dangerous drugs ever. Schedule right. one is where it needs to be, and and, and, and we're done with it. This one, it, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I don't really know the answer to this, but uh, I don't see this as coming out of a petition. This seems to be more of an internal thing that the DEA has decided to look at it again themselves, and I'm wondering why are they doing this unless maybe they got something planned. I, I, I know that, um, uh, you know, just beating the streets and talking to the average consumer, that the whole the whole recent article that came out as far as Nixon and the, you know, the late 70s presidency, right. the, you know, the be safe, say no to drugs sort of campaign and how it was kind of fabricated in a lot of ways, did did create a lot of awareness as far as where the country has gone within the cannabis plant and how it became taboo for many reasons that I don't think the average person in America understands, you know, the fight against hemp paper, the fight against, you know, alcohol, you know, big tobacco, all of that fun stuff, you know, so I could definitely see it kind of stemming from there. Yeah, I mean, the, the Nixon quote that you're referring to, or it was one of his advisors, rather, saying that this was actually a strategy, that Nixon was getting criticized. The two big groups that he, he sort of hated him were the African-American community and sort of the hippie leftist young people that were protesting the war and that uh, the, the drug war was all about dismantling yeah. those political opposition groups and that's hence the war on drugs. And, th- and that was just an article within the last week. And, uh, yeah, you know, that yeah. just came to light within yeah. the last week. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, this is what people have been saying for a very long time. And I think what many of us have known already. But then to get the quote from the guy who said it and the, sort of the confirmation that what we've been hearing is true, mm-hmm. it makes sense. Uh, you yep. get to that that book, the, the New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander, which is all about how you know the drug war is really a, a very intentionally racist policy that's been targeting the African American community, and uh, you know white people and black people consume drugs at the same level, but black people are getting arrested for it at four times the rate of white people. And you, you look at that, and it's yeah. like this: this does this looks intentional, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I it, mean it, even going even going down to calling it marijuana as being a Hispanic term as opposed to cannabis, even back in the day, it's always been very racially targeted, I believe. With the DEA, it, it my first take before I actually clicked on the article, just reading the headline, the first thing that came to my head was that they're realizing that they're not fooling anybody anymore. With just with the classification, not in regards to legality or anything else, just with it being classified Schedule One. Uh, we have the internet now, yeah. and it's a uh, you know this wonderful thing that gives us all this information, is particularly for young people where we get to look this stuff up and we can't be fooled uh, yep. over and over again. Uh, these lies don't stick anymore, and they're never going to stick for our generation. Right. No. 
Yeah, that's cool. That's totally crazy. Um, I and I, I, I talk openly on the show all the time about supporting Bernie. I think that Bernie's take on the whole how he's going to handle cannabis is a really good way to go. I know that the Democrat, the whole Democrat party, seems to be fairly in favor, at least in the in the screen of things on the on the surface, at least. But from what I'm to understand, most of the Republicans are completely against it. Um. I wouldn't quite describe it that way. Uh, there's a lot of Democrats that are very much so against marijuana. I mean, if you just look, let, let's take Amendment 64, for example, okay? Who's the biggest named person in Colorado that endorsed Amendment 64? The biggest named politician. Hickenlooper, Hickenlooper was against it. He's a yeah. Democrat. Hancock, Hancock, our Democrat Hancock, mayor, yeah. he was yeah. also against it. Two mm -hmm. top Democrats I can think of were against this policy. How about our Democrat congressman? I don't remember any of them endorsing it. When I get to the biggest name endorser of Amendment 64, I have to get down to Tom Tancredo, a Republican. Yeah. And that's a very true statement. You right get there. to the libertarian Republicans. You're, you know, Gary Johnson right now is running for president. Libertarian leaning. He, you know, he, he's been very pro marijuana. You get your Rand Paul and your Ron Paul, the libertarian right. wing of the Republican Party. Is uh, uh, they might not like marijuana, but they don't think the government should be prohibited. Yeah, and I think that's what it is. And I think because Hickenlooper has come out and publicly switched his opinion on it, but he, I think that a lot of their reasoning, whether or not they're personally for or against marijuana, was was to not disrupt the establishment take on it. What would be your thoughts? On yeah, that? well, I, I think there's a lot of elected officials who don't really care, but when it comes down to uh, they say, yeah, the political establishment, that the powers that be, law enforcement is very much so against it. Yeah. A lot of, you know, parents and, and uh, uh, you know, the, the political establishment has just been against marijuana. The business community has been against it. And, and the other, the elected officials have gotten behind them. Uh, but, you know, I, I like this one, too, because we have 100 state legislators in Colorado. And marijuana, uh, Amendment 64, it passed with 55% of the vote. How many, how many of those 100 legislators do you think endorsed it? With 55% of the vote, how many endorsed it? 40, than, 45, 50? No. You think it say. might be, You'd yeah, let's say we be. got two. Two. Uh, Representative John Singer, a Democrat, and there was a Republican, Sean Mitchell, Republican. And two out of 100. And it just goes to show how it, this has been the political establishment versus the people. And I think this is one of the reasons why Colorado led the way. It was very, it's, it's relatively easy for people to put something on the ballot, take it around the elected officials and go directly to the voters. And that's what happened with Amendment 64. And I think, yeah, one of the reasons why uh, we made it happen. Yeah, right. I, I agree. And you've, seen, you've seen it going for a long time. You've been in the industry probably longer than I have, which I feel like I'm a veteran in it now. Um, what have you seen that's bad in Denver because of it? And bad, well, uh, or, or negative, I suppose. Because uh, I've only, I, I'm on the side where I only see the positive. I see it, I see it benefiting real estate. I see it benefiting Joe Blow, the the lighter maker. I see it benefiting schools. I see it benefiting the uh, uh, infrastructure. Yeah, and you're also in the shop where everybody that comes in and talks to you is obviously for. That's it, true. <laughs> That's for the true. most part. Uh, well. I'll do the bads. I got a couple of bads, but let's 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 go through more of the positives because mm -hmm. yeah, we got record economic growth, record tourism, record job creation, record construction, record real estate. Uh, I mean, my my home value economy, has skyrocketed it, in the last two years. It is ridiculous you know? how much property values have gone up yeah. because people are moving here. Right. Denver just got ranked the best city to live in in the United yeah. States by U.S. News and World Report. They were lying. Move back home. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like one of those things. Like, Ew. we gotta. Yeah. But we're good. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Best place to live for us for it's us not, yeah it's not good for anybody you probably wouldn't like it yeah. here <laughs> uh but yeah all that economic stuff it, it's 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 great it's hard to argue with it and then you get to the safety stuff you know we are considered a low traffic fatality state by the national government by nitsa uh because literally colorado is like setting a new standard on low traffic fatalities and you, you hear it from the prohibitionists they want to make it sound like there's carnage in the roads and it really there, there's a lot of evidence showing that and marijuana reform states, people are substituting marijuana for alcohol. There's less drunk driving. Right. Hence, lives are being saved. Yeah. Right. And you look at the actual data, and wow, this is uh, our streets are, are, are rather safe. Safe uh, crime, it has been relatively stagnant. Teen marijuana use has been relatively stagnant. So you see all those problems that people were predicting that never came to pass. But so I got a couple problems though. Uh, 
I would say this. Odor is a problem, and Denver is about to address it. Oh, Denver's odor. coming down yeah. with an odor issue. Yeah. It's one of the things that we hear a lot of complaints about yeah. is that uh, 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 the industry needs to do a better job. And there is an odor ordinance that yeah, I think is going to be solving it for the most part, carbon filtration. It's going to cost the industry money, uh, which you know is frustrating for everybody, but uh, that's, that's an issue. Um, otherwise, you know, I think in Denver right now there's a lot of talk about um, really about how many businesses there are, how visible they are, and impacts on neighborhood communities. Right. Uh, we, you know, I say that we're talking about problems. I'm not sure how much of a problem this is in some ways. I mean, uh, the industry, it's a big industry in Denver, and it's helping out in a lot of ways. Uh, I've been hearing a lot from neighborhood communities that are frustrated that they've got pot shops, but they don't have grocery stores. Right. And, you know, I hear it, and I, I'm trying to sympathize, empathize, and want to come up with solutions, but uh, you know, it doesn't mean that if a pot shop closes down, a grocery store is gonna gonna right. pop yeah, open. That's true. Uh, exactly. One one thing I like, and one thing I've always actually really liked about Colorado Harvest Company is take a look at this logo here. That logo is not offending anybody in, yeah. in and of itself. Uh, and but there are certainly plenty of stores within a mile of here that blatantly, you know, use the name of the plant and the logo. Uh, With neon to kind of throw in people's yeah. faces, and I'm, I've honestly like being someone who's pro Amendment 64. I, that's something I can kind of relate. If you're if you really don't like it and don't want your kids seeing that when they're driving down the street, yeah, you know, it's a balancing act of uh, of integrating into the community. You know, we don't need to slap it in the face of every mom that's driving to school yeah, exactly. with their kids in the car, right? And I think we've done a good job finding that right balancing act. But Mo more and more people yeah. are, yeah. And the people like the, for lack of a better term, the stoners that just wanted to run it, sell weed for a living are getting run out of business. And the people that are legit are the people that are are standing tall. You know, like like a CHC or. And, and I and think some a lot of, of that stores. has to do with the policies that you're fighting for yeah. for us. Yeah, I think totally. I remember six years ago, I was I was just trying to learn about it, and I had. Not only me, but multiple friends that were in the industry that were working 20 hours a day, getting no pay, if pay, sometimes being promised a check, you know, by by the shadier businessmen just trying to, you know, f jump on the green rush and make their millions, you know, and the the policies that you guys have been fighting for to stand, not only stand up for us, but also take care of the community that I don't interact with, unfortunately, because I'd like to interact with all of them, but. I think that it's huge what you guys are doing. Uh, thank you. It, it's a tough balancing act because, uh, you know, we've really, as an industry, have embraced these regulations, which is tough because most industries, the mantra is, you know, uh, regulations kill innovation and, you know, uh, just get rid of the regulations. We need less of them. Yeah. Look, and, like, look at the gun argument for yeah. a prime example of that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's when we go from nothing, we, we got to create something mm -hmm. and then... Uh, and, and that's been kind of the trick is, uh, of course, there is over-regulation in cannabis regulations. There's quite a few areas that seem ridiculous and not helpful, and uh, we're kind of stuck with them. But, you know, a, a lot of these uh, ways of, you know, tracking and testing and uh, the labeling and the packaging, well, a lot of it, too. Uh, these things I just said, I'm like, eh, some of this <laughs> stuff is, is maybe yeah. a bit too much, too. Yeah. But, you know, the... the, the it's still, it's really good. It's so much better than it's ever been before. And uh, and it's brought this new legitimacy and it's safety and consumer safety and consumer information, uh, which has just never been offered before. Right. Well, we yeah. kind of we kind of came out the gun just like all all the stoner community just like celebrating so hard that it's it's understandable. You gotta pull the reins back a little bit and not sprint out the gates right away. So. Well, and we have to remember too. I mean, getting back to uh, uh, the Obama administration, that uh, uh, you know, there's nothing inevitable about what's going on here. That right. you know, the Obama Justice Department has said repeatedly they can shut this entire thing down. But they're not going to. They've got limited law enforcement resources, and they're really just going to focus on, uh, uh, you know, really illegal activity and then sort of big safety issues that they see. And uh, we have to, as a state, do a really good job, do better than anyone thought we could, mm -hmm. to uh, to make this safe, to make it responsible, to prove to all the naysayers that uh, this is going to work, and to prove to our next president. Right. Yeah. That uh, they should, at the very least, 
keep the status quo or loosen it up in, in some way. Right. Yeah, it's, right. A, it's definitely some scary, interesting times. This next year is going to be crazy. So what, uh, if you ever do want to check out Mar- Marijuana Industry Group, you can join. I saw on the website. Yeah, what, can, what is the website real quick? It's the mar- marijuanaindustrygroup.org, uh, my email address. I'll just throw it out there. It's mike at marijuanaindustrygroup.org. Um, and if we're wrapping up, it's been a lot of fun, yes? Thank yeah, you. thank you for yeah. coming down, man. It's the, one of the coolest things about the Pot Talk segment is, is getting all these different perspectives. And, and at this point, we've had just about every side of of, uh, of the cannabis industry and its lobbyists in here for a talk and it's been really cool uh, as someone like me that's just a journalist and doesn't actually work in that field to learn all this stuff and be able to ask questions and get legitimate answers with facts yes so I dig it I would I, definitely I really love like to have you back at some point I know you're a busy man so He's got a great team over there. You got a great, great group of people, the ones that I've met from your organization. So we look forward to having Michael Elliott, Marijuana Industry uh, Group.org. Make sure that you check him out. Um, we appreciate you being down here, man. All right. Thanks a lot, yeah. guys. Take oh. care. All right. Thank you, Mike. And uh, thank you for checking this out. This is Music Buzz Live. We will be back. Stick around. World Viral TV is brought to you, as always, by Colorado Harvest Company. Colorado Harvest Company. People are coming from all over the world to check out Denver's growing cannabis industry. And most of them are leaving happy after they've been to Colorado Harvest Company. Why Colorado Harvest Company? For so many reasons, we pride ourselves on carrying only the most consistent flowers and products with knowledgeable and friendly bud tenders that'll assist you with everything that you need. Buds, vaporizers, concentrates, topicals, edibles, and drinks, all from only the best companies in the state. If you're looking for the best cannabis experience in Denver, look no further than Colorado Harvest Company.